Let's look to the Lord. Gracious Father in heaven, O God, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, it's once again we want to thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, we want to let you know that you've been good to us, Lord Jesus, this year, Lord. You've been faithful to us, Lord, and we appreciate everything that you've done for us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for how you carried us, Lord, every step of the way, Lord Jesus. Lord, you've been, Lord Jesus, our divine protection on this year, Lord Jesus. You've been a good God, Lord Jesus. Lord, and we just want to tell you thank you, Lord. We appreciate, Lord, how you kept our bishop, Lord, and, and Lady Stearns, Lord, on this year, Lord Jesus. You've been good to us, Lord Jesus. Lord, our first family, Lord, the Allen family, Lord, you've been good to us, Lord, giving us a pastor out your own heart to teach us and feed us the word of God, Lord Jesus. Lord, as we sit here, Lord, at supper on tonight, Lord Jesus, feed us, Lord, with manna on high, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, Lord, speak to your manservant tonight, Lord. Give us what to, give him what to give your people, Lord, on tonight, Lord Jesus. Feed him the word of God, Lord, anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, Lord, have your way in this service, Lord. Give us ears to hear, a heart to receive, a mind and heart to obey your word, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask that you remember the bereaved family, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, Lord, even our aged mothers and fathers, Lord. Oh, God, remember, Lord, our young people, Lord, in a special way, Lord Jesus. Even those behind prison walls, Lord Jesus, and the hospital rooms, Lord Jesus. Go in and touch and send a healing like only you can. Continue to remember us, Lord Jesus, and we'll give you the praise and the honor, Lord Jesus. Saturate this place with your presence, Lord Jesus. Lord, give us a word from on high, and we will live, Lord, that... Lord, whatever you say, live, Lord Jesus. We will do according to your will, Lord Jesus. Bless us real good, Lord. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we ask these blessings. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we'll receive our pastor, the teacher of the hour. hour. Let's receive him by saying amen. amen. Thank you, Brother Clark. Amen. Praise the Lord, household of faith. Amen. How many just glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? What a privilege. What a privilege. And those out there in YouTube land, you should thank God to be able to hear. Amen. For faith still cometh by hearing, not seeing, hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. We praise the Lord for another opportunity to come before God's people, to be able to serve. And that's what uh, it's all about. Amen. In the ministry, I know a lot of people have in their minds to build up certain <laughs> reputations of themselves. But uh, when it boils down to it, it's about being saved. Save yourself. Take heed unto yourself and the doctrine. Continue in them. And then you'll find yourself, you'll save yourself. And then them that hear you. So I just praise the Lord for being under such a, a rich ministry of Bishop George Stearns. And uh, I hope that it's helping uh, and encouraging him to let him see that his labor is not in vain. Amen. Amen. To see the teachers of the hour and how God uh, had us in mind. Uh, during his ministry, while we were sitting down, God was feeding us for a time like this. We're the little ravens now. Amen. Dropping the bread to make sure you can survive the famines. And that's the Lord's doing. Amen. So we praise the Lord for that. Amen. Me to the word of the Lord. Amen. And uh, we hope that you had a very good Christmas. Amen. Because... Uh, uh, the Lord has been good to us. If you are here in this Bible class, he has been good to you. Amen. Amen. Uh, our lesson today is going to be in the book of Hebrews or the epistle that we believe Paul wrote to the Hebrews. The second page of this letter, lines 14 through 18. Lines 14 through 18. And then we're going to, uh, in the middle of those lines, we're going to stop. We're going to look at Romans, the eighth page of that letter. Line 29. And 
Then we're going to go to Acts chapter 2, 38 through 41. And then we're going to drop down to 46 through 47. And then in the same book, we're going to turn to the 18th chapter of Acts 9 through 10. Then in our deliberation, we're going to look at Ephesians, the second page of this letter, lines 1 through 2. And then let's, you can just write it down. We're going to go as far as the Lord allows. St. John 16, 7 through 11. And then Romans 8, 1 through 3. And believe it or not, after that, then we're going to go to uh, the second text of our lesson. So that just shows you that we're going to slow down um, because when we uh, look at the book of Hebrews, one thing I'm going to ask Logan Park to do is uh, bear with us. I know that a lot of things that's being said may be redundant, but because we are on a YouTube platform, we cannot feel that everybody have received what we receive. And so therefore we uh, have to uh, let God use us the way he want to use us and make sure that everyone have an understanding. So we're going to fortify because I can tell you that even as I teach certain things, uh, this is meat and everybody can handle meat. You have to chew it up, digest it, go back, make sure they got it, the clear understanding of it because it's not vaulting or vaunting out knowledge. It's not, that's not a true minister's uh, duty that's not his pleasure his pleasure is did you understand did you get it under you can't practice something you don't understand and so the reason why we have so many scriptures here is to pound the fault that what is god is saying saying supporting it with scripture so you can leave feeling that my faith is in god and not man you see so uh, i've learned that and don't worry we're not going to be as slow uh, in this, uh, there comes a time where you can travel a little quickly because certain scriptures builds up a thought. Uh, but then in some scriptures like the railroad tracks, you got to slow down and go slow over them that everybody, that you don't actually have any damage. So let's, uh, let's read. Uh, let's go ahead and read Hebrews, the second page, 14 through 18. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, mm -hmm. and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Mm -hmm. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, yes. but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Now, when we look at this particular lesson, we're still dealing with we must remain or we must remain steadfast in Christ Jesus. We must remain steadfast in Christ Jesus. Uh, we talked about that. And uh, you can't remain steadfast or firm or fixed in the faith until you first be actually baptized into Jesus Christ and be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. You must be placed in the body before you can be steadfast in him uh, to the end. You can't have a start without first going through the door. And Jesus is that door. 
But what I would like to do for just a few minutes is to kind of to get an understanding in the setting of the book of Hebrews. Uh, and I believe Paul is the author. And Paul had made mention, I believe it's like 1 Corinthians, the ninth page of that letter, how he, he wants to make sure that people understand him. So he would look at his audience, and it depends on the audience and their knowledge of God, how he would convey the word of God. Uh, when it came to those that were barbarians or those that did not have no knowledge, he came on their level. He didn't talk about no circumcision. He didn't talk about different feasts and Passover because they didn't have knowledge of that. But when it came to the Jews, though, those who understood the law, he took the law and the deeds of the law and all the feasts and opened up their eyes of understanding in Christ Jesus. And so what you have here is you have this letter that is written to persecuted Jews. And I'm just going to read a little bit about it. Uh, the purpose of this is to encourage scattered Hebrew Christians or Palestinian Jews, those who were familiar with the law of Moses, the temple, the deeds of the law. Remember the mindset of the Pharisees. Now what you have to do is you have to remember the mindset of the Pharisees concerning Jesus Christ. It was not like what you see today in America where you can just freely worship with no penalty. Uh, their mindset was if any man confess that Jesus was the Christ, you will be kicked out the synagogue. And so therefore, they were excommunicating those who took on the Christian faith. And it was something serious. It was not like, well, they don't want me to go to that church, I go to this church. It was a, a, a big meaning behind that because... To be excommunicated, that means the actions of official, official excluding someone uh, from participating in the sacrament offerings and the services of the temple. And this here uh, uh, was deemed uh, uh, to be actually the only way to worship God. And they felt that if you could not go to the temple, and you could not give your offerings, you was eliminated of worshiping God. In other words, you were damned. They felt they had that power to excommunicate you. And this was what was happening among more persecution. And so Paul had to write to them to let them know because some of the Jews, Christian Jews, were abandoning the Christian faith, going back to Judaism. And Paul had to enlighten them saying, wait, hold it. Before you make this error, I want you to know that, yes, God gave the law. Yes, God gave the ironic priesthood. Yes, God is the one that gave the, 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 the schematics for the tabernacle and all the offerings. But it was a type. He began to let them know that, that Moses was a great and faithful man, which we're going to get into it. But he's saying, but Jesus is greater than Moses. He said, yes, they had a tabernacle, but he says, but Jesus went into a much better tabernacle, not a sanctuary down here, but heaven himself. He made, he made letting them know, yes, they got blood and offering, but you're not missing anything because that blood ain't doing anything anymore. Jesus, in whom you believe, he have taken his blood up, and you have got better blood that have did something to your conscience that that blood of bulls and goats could not do. So he began to let them know and encourage them in the faith, and this is the reason why he writes the, to, the, um, to the Jews that were being persecuted. Now, what I would like for us to do, I want us to look at and read uh, uh, again Hebrews 2, Sister Chumley, if you would, Hebrews 2 and 14. Now, we're going to stay here because there's two main thoughts that we need to walk away with and understand it. And one of them is, it says, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. I want us to focus because I know that some people haven't got it in their mind and understanding yet that Christ did not come to die for everybody. They're still stuck on that. So I, I, I want, don't want to leave when anybody's stuck on that. I want you to understand that the children, you're dealing with God and his foreknowledge. You're not dealing with us who guess who's going to be saved. See, we can look over somebody, we'll look over a crackhead, 
And we'll look over a prostitute. We have attempted to look over a drunk, thinking that they are never changed. And then look at folks that you think they got some sense. And then uh, just because they nodding their hands and saying amen, you'll never know who God is going to touch at the end of the day. You see, so we can't be or have respect a person when it comes with the faith of God. For it is sin for us to, to determine who we going to feel going to receive the gospel. You don't know who's going to receive the gospel. That's God's business. See, that's, this is God's work. It's our job to let our light so shine before men that they may see what? The, our good works and glorify God which is in heaven. See, we are the epistles. And see, he will send us out. We're his track. We give tracks out to who we feel might read it and have an effect on the intellect and all like that, but or the, the lowest in the gut. But let me just say this too. The rich man in whom you might feel don't need a track, he's the one that really need a track. So God, who knows those that are his, he, he passes out with different types of things that we face in life and let the world see us live through it and then it arouses a question to them uh, on, on why do you do what you do? And then you can give a reason of that hope that lieth within you. So when we begin to look at Hebrews 2 and 14, there's two thoughts that we will to leave with tonight. And then we can move to 15. And that is the children. Who are the children? Knowing that God has the power to actually declare the the end from the very beginning. God don't have to guess. God don't have to wish. God knows. He don't need time to find out. God knows. And he makes plans. And the way he speaks, we can't speak that way. God can say, I will do this and I will do that. We can't say that. You see, we have to say, if the Lord's will. See, God is the one that can say, uh, uh, or, 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 or have that power to actually speak those things as they're not as though they were. He has that power because he can do it. He can perform it. He knows not only the external, he knows the intent of every man's heart. He knows. Nothing's hid from him. David says, Lord, thou hast searched me, E.D. Not you are searching me. He says, you've already examined me. When was the examined? Before I was even made, Lord, you knew all about me. You've seen my thoughts from afar off. Before in my mother's womb, you already searched me out. And God don't, didn't just search David out. He searched all of us out. God knows us. He knows our down city. That's you thinking about what you're going to do, your plans, your designs, everything you got in your mind, God is in the meeting with you. And when you get up to carry it out, he knows why you did it. Even before the thought hit your mind, God has already moved. He's already moved. And when you look at even Esther, Esther, it, it, the whole book of Esther is, is because a man named Haman thought in his mind that he's going to eradicate all the Jews. And just because he had in his mind that he's going to eradicate all the Jews, his plots, his plans, hiding it from the king, God moved before the thought even hit his mind and vanished Vashti and put Esther in position because I already see what you're going to do. That's the kind of God we serve. So when, when he talks, we have to realize he ain't talking like us. He ain't talking like us. So when he says, for as much then as the children, he ain't talking about the whole world. Real quick, let's go to Romans 8 and 29. For whom he did foreknow, uh -huh. he also did predestinate uh -huh. to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, let me just say this up front. This scripture does not support eternal security. It's not saying that because you save, you're going to always stay saved. That's not what it means. 
But it does mean that God knows who's going to be saved. He already, he says, for, see, in other words, you can believe God in the beginning. God give you the Holy Ghost. God will walk with you, you all. In other words, I mean, but you will think that you're fooling somebody. God will walk right with you, knowing that you ain't going to walk all the way. That's the kind of God we serve. Because he deal with you for the now. You and I got to live out our actions. We got to live out what's in our heart. We got to live out what he already know about us because you got to know why you made it to heaven and you got to know why you made it to hell. You got to. He already knows. But you got to know. You got to know that he has been merciful. You got to know that if it had not been for God in my time of sorrow, I cried out to the Lord because I wanted to be saved and he strengthened me and helped me. And if it had not been for him, I would have not made it. So I'm not worthy for this crown. You throw it at his feet. Why? Because he's given you experience and he lets you live out what he's already saw from before the foundation of the world. But Judas, he already knew Judas was going to betray him. But he didn't mistreat him. None of the disciples had a clue. Not even at the last moment. They thought he was going to do something or, or, or give some money to the poor. That's how private and how he kept them and treated them all alike. Knowing when he picked him, you're not, you're not mine. And yet he breathed on them, received the Holy Ghost. Go preach. Go cast out devils. Washed his feet. I'm just showing you. So when it comes to God, God is not like us. So when it comes to the children, he ain't talking about those who start out and don't finish. He sees everyone that will believe to the end. And there's already enough witnesses in the ground, you all. He already knows those who's going to believe to the end not throw their hands up and he is able to predestinate he says for whom he who's he God did foreknow or know beforehand he also predestinate he predetermined he determined beforehand what was his determined what was his purpose to that we may be conformed in the image now you got to be made in the likeness of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ it wasn't, didn't have to be made into the image. Y'all get what I'm saying? <laughs> he is the image of the invisible God. We lost that likeness. We got to be made into the likeness. And God saw all of us who would believe in Jesus Christ and prede pre predestined or predetermined in his mind that I am going to have Jesus, my son, who's in my express image. He's the firstborn of all the others. And I'm going to have him to be their captain. I'm going to have them to be their lord, their prince. He's going to be the author and the finisher of their faith. And I'm going to let him be the sanctifier. He's the cleanser. He's the one who's going to wash them in his own blood. And through the word, the doctrine of Christ, I'm going to wash them. So you're being washed right now by the word of God. By the word of God. And he says, for whom he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of who? His son. His son, his only begotten son. Jesus, not anyone else. Why are you trying to be like the world? Why are you trying to be like this person? Why are you trying to be like that person? God is saying there's only one that I have delight in. There's only one that pleased me. There's only one that I really love, and that's the holy begotten son. And I have made a way for you to come back to me, but it's through my son. Through my son. And I have foreordained. I didn't wait for Adam to fall. To come up with a plan. I love man so much. That I saw the fall. Before man got on the scene. And I've already made in my mind. That I will not eradicate man. As a whole. I will give them another chance. 
and I'm going to beget me a son who's not pre-existing. But I will bring him into the word, world by the power of my word. And not only, the, I said a son, a man child. God is not a man. A man child on this earth who Adam lost that position. He lost that likeness. But that's all right. I'm going to have a second Adam. Adam created son, Jesus, the only begotten, the express image of the invisible God. I'm going to let him come into the world, and he's going to be the savior of those children, those who will believe. That's why don't waste your time trying to convince folks. If God don't draw them, who are you? That's why we don't compromise the word of God. We ain't trying to fill this church up. We ain't trying to sit up there and get people's uh, 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 approval. We want God's approval. Yes. If they don't come, it's because they are not his. If this gospel is here, it is here to them that are lost. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Everybody ain't going to be saved. Everybody ain't going to be saved. So he says that he might, he is Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brethren. Let's get Acts 2, 38 and 41. We want to Fortify the children. Because I thank God that I'm one of their children. He saw me, you all. You got to put your name there. You got to say he saw me. God saw you. He's not getting himself familiarized with you. You ain't new in his sight. You just came on the scene. But he saw you before even Adam. In Adam long, he saw you. And in his mind, he saw that we will believe this gospel. He saw that we would go down in Jesus' name, that blood washing our souls. And he saw us giving up the world. And he saw us wanting to be like Jesus in whom he loved. And seeing that, God says, children. And as the children are flesh and blood, he also came likewise for a purpose. And we're going to get into that a little later. Let's find out what Acts 2 and 38 through 41 say. Then Peter said unto them, uh -huh. Repent, yes. and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ uh -huh. for the remission of sin. Yes. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. No sin is prayer. I just got to throw that out. Whoever just for, watching it for the first time, this is the institutionalizing of the church in Acts 2. Don't try to go to Romans. The church is already here. The gospel brings you to Calvary. Acts, let's move on. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. That brings you to Calvary because Jesus is still living. And so you, 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 you can't get into the church until he rise. And so after he rise, he tells them to go to Jerusalem and wait. And Acts picks them up at Jerusalem, and they're waiting for the day of Pentecost. And so now Acts give us the formula or, or give us the, actually the answer to the formula of Matthew 28 and 19. See, now we know the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And so therefore he says, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name, singular, Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Is that what we just read? All right, just making sure we're in the Word. Let's read on. For the promises unto you. For the promises unto you. And to your children. And to your children. And to all that are afar off. That's the Gentiles. Let's read. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Even as many as our Lord. You can try to come, but except God draw you. You can come. A lot of people come up with folks, but God didn't draw you. Your friend drew you. But God got to draw you. You can give it a good old shot, but unless God draws you, in other words, you got to be broken. You got to be hurt. You got to go. When God, when God really deals with you and every man get a chance, God, unstop your deaf ear because every creature is going to hear this gospel. You're not going to say, I don't know why I'm burning. You're going to know why you're burning. You're going to know why you actually in the lake of fire. You rejected the only remedy that God has. 
And when this gospel is preached, God unstop your deaf ears. He knocked the scales off your eyes. And that stony heart, he shakes it to let you see yourself for the very first time. And you can feel, I, want, I, I see myself, and I want to be saved. I want to be saved. But you'll find the devil trying to tell you, you got time. Not right now. Yes, that's right. Let's do it a little later. And God has said, which we're dealing with, the day you hear my voice. We talk about expired opportunity. And he said, the day, harden not your heart. So he began to let us see. Uh, I'll read on in Acts. And with many other words did he testify. Yes. And exhort, uh -huh. saying, yes. save yourself uh -huh. from this untoward generation. Save yourselves from this crooked or this untoward generation. Because I do not, and we're going to keep on reading, we're going to drop down. Uh, to 46 and 47, but because I don't know the Lord's children, then you can't pace yourself looking to the left or the right. You don't know who's going to throw their hands up. You don't know who's going to actually, God is saying, you're saying, oh, I know that they saved. Do you? You don't know if you're going to make it to the end. You got to constantly have in your mind and your heart, Lord, save me, Lord. You got to pray that. I know people look at me and say, oh, he had a good start. I hope he had a, a, a good ending. Well, I hope you have a good ending too. Go ahead. Go ahead. You had a good start. I hope you have a good ending. This ain't no pastoral thing. Everybody had a good start. I hope we all have a good ending. Because it ain't how well you start. It ain't how you're continuing. Only. It's how you end. It's how you end. And you're going to find a lot of folks who've been in this way a long time throwing up their hands. But God says, I got to have my feast filled, my, 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 my wedding. I can't go into the highways and byways and tell them to invite them to my feast. And God, if you don't worship God, he said, I have the rocks come out and they're going to worship him. For me. So what did uh, Acts uh, 46 and 7 say? And they continuing daily uh -huh. with one accord in the temple uh -huh. and breaking bread from house to house. No, 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 no. You know what? Let's go back up because I want us to go, go back up to uh, 41. 41. Yes, ma'am. Then they that uh -huh. gladly received his word were baptized. Stop. Now we say, and 3,000 were baptized. But I'm here to let you know it was more than 3,000. And 3,000 was added to the church. But I'm, and we make it sound like that. Everybody who heard Peter preach is like, oh, I want to be saved. No, no, no. It was more than 3,000. So let's read that again. Then they uh -huh. that gladly received his word were baptized. They that gladly received his word was baptized. Not everybody. Those who gladly. Everybody didn't gladly receive his word and everybody wasn't baptized everybody's hearing me right now you ain't gladly receiving this word and so you ain't gonna be here next wednesday on youtube and the same day and the same day there were added unto them uh -huh. about three thousand souls and the same day was added unto them about what three thousand three thousand souls. souls all right uh-huh 46. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple. Yes. And breaking bread from house to house. Yes. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Uh-huh. Praising God and having favor with all the people. Mm -hmm. And the Lord added to the church. Who added? The Lord. You can't add to God's church. Go ahead. You can bring, bring I tell them, bring them to church. But don't try to force them. Bring them here. Let them hear. But don't tell them, now get up, get up, get up. Y'all get up and go to the altar and get prayer. Y'all go now, right now. No, leave them alone. Let them hear the word of God. And when they get up, you rest assured it's because they chose now in their own mind and their own heart to come to God. You got a lot of children who are turning away from God because they were forced 
And God, you can't force, I don't care, even my children. Because I'm a pastor, don't mean every last one I'm going to be saved. God still says, Alan, save yourself from this untoward generation. And he says, he, God, the Lord added. Is that what it says? To the church, what? Daily. Uh-huh. Such as should be saved. Such as should. The children before the foundation of the world. And now Christ comes and he seeks for believers. He's now saving believers. Everybody don't believe. So now let us look at uh, Acts 18, 9 and 10, and we're going to move on. Acts 18, 9 and 10. I'm just going to show you that God got a, 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 a number. Y'all believe that God knows his number? God is not. <laughs> it, just like you had one, when, when, when Noah made the ark, the ark was that refuge of safety. Uh, 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 you had one person begin the entry. And you rest assured you had one last one to come through and God shut the door. You had the first person go down. I don't know what apostle it was. But whoever was the first to go down in Jesus' name and feel with the Holy Ghost, we said 120. That's the beginning. But God knows the last one that's going to go down in his name. He knows the last one that's going to be filled with his spirit. And you rest assured it ain't going to be no more than that number that he has in mind because that's the last believer in this dispensation and age. He knows. And who knows? It might not be in Gary. Might not be in this country. He might just be going down right now as we speak. And once he gets in, now Noah, close the door. The door is shut. The opportunity now is expired. Let's read. Then spake the Lord to Paul uh -huh. in the night by a vision. Yes. Be not afraid, uh -huh. but speak uh -huh. and hold not thy peace. Uh -huh. For I am with thee. I am with thee, Paul. Uh -huh. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. Now I want you to speak in this city. And, here's a, and don't worry, Paul. I know you've been in prison. I know you've been beaten all that. But this city here, don't worry. I am with thee. No man is going to hurt thee. But I want you to speak my word. Why is this? Let's read. For I have much people in this city. I have much people in this city. I'm just showing you <laughs> that God, don't go to Bethsaida. Uh, 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 he tells him, I want you to go to Macedonia. I want you, there's, I, there's a man there. See, he forbid, he said, the Holy Ghost, I wanted to come, but the Holy Ghost forbid me. Sometimes, if you really realize there's certain people God tells you, don't cast your pearls among the swine. Everybody don't want to hear about Jesus. And you waste your time, and you find yourself putting your own soul in jeopardy because they're going to mock something that you treasure value. You'll find yourself getting out of fix. Because they take that what you value and joke around with it. And you gave your whole life for it. And God says, be careful. Be careful. So the, we, we find that the Lord says, I got much people in this city. So for as then as the children are partakers, let's go back to our lesson, Hebrews 2 and 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, Jesus, also took part of the same. Now, we, we're not going to get into that. We did that last week, talking about the word, the, 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 the spoken word, the prophetic word. Now, he, in this point, when he says he, uh, he took on the same, the living word. See, the living word. And now he's ascended. Now you're getting the preach word. And see, the same power that's in him. So he says, uh, as a partaker of flesh and blood, he also took part of the same for what purpose? And we're going to emphasize in this and we're going to call it 
a night, and we'll see you next week if the Lord should tarry. That what? Through death. That through death. Now, got to take on something that is capable of dying, capable of losing a life. Let me just say this. Life is in the blood. That's the Bible. Life is in the blood. And I know we say when I see the blood, but let me just share this. Get out your mind just seeing blood because blood typifies a life has been taken, not cut, and he's still walking around. When God demanded blood, that means a life has been taken. A life came to an end for the penalty of sin. That's what that means. So now God, he has always, because of the sin of Adam, Adam, you have sinned. And the wages of sin is death. Now somebody got to pay the price. And I can't deny who I am. I can't sweep this under the rug. I can't close my eyes like it don't exist. I can't turn my back and let you into heaven and act like you. God is not like a man. Ain't no politics with God. That's why I know people try to play with it. Like they're going to, you're going to, you're going to, uh, you can't, you, you can go ahead and bake the, the pasta a cake. But that ain't going to make you go to heaven. Go ahead and give them a gift. That's beautiful. But that didn't make you one closer to God. God is not going to be bribed. And people think they can bribe God. Get on their deathbed and I'm going to do this and I'm going to visit this and I'm going to do this. God's looking at your heart and already waited out. Already waited out and knowing that you, it's because you got caught. And now your hour has come. So he says through that through death. Notice what he says. He will. He might. Hmm. Because I told you all, and I can see some people were stuck when I said Jesus could fail. And people like, yeah, you make him a, a robot. You make him one that has, uh, you strip him of his loyalty and his faithfulness to God when you make him feel like he could not fail. And why would the devil tempt him if he could not fall for it? He had to be my example. I'm going to be tempted and I can fail. I need an example of somebody who can be tempted and get the victory. So Jesus here shows you that through death he might destroy him that have the power of death that is the devil. Might this shows also in other scriptures which we get that Jesus had to be qualified. He didn't just die. He had to be qualified. He had to be proven. He had to be tested before death and come out with no fault, no blemish, or other words, no sin. Like Hebrews 4 and 15 says, it goes on and says, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sins. The devil came through all three angles, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Just like we got to go all through these angles, that's what the devil shoot for. And you're about to find out that this is what it meant when he says uh, um, to destroy, uh, 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 that he, uh, yeah, that, that through death he might destroy him, that's the devil, that have the power of death, that is the devil. I want you to know right now that the devil is still here. So destroying him don't mean that he don't no longer exist. That's not what that means. I'm about to show us. We're going to take our time. I'm going to show you that there was a dominion. This world, the devil, before Christ came, the, the, the devil had dominion of this world. And when I say dominion means that every man was under his power power, his control. You can have a mind to do right, but he had the ability to give you influence through the lust of your eyes, the lust of your flesh, and the pride of life which give you the action of that old man, that sinful nature that will cause you to sin, which is the wages of sin is death, and no one can escape because all you had was an ungodly nature. Ungodly nature. So, let's get real quick, then speaking of that, Let's go to Ephesians. 
2, 1 and 2. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, uh -huh. the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Now, before Christ came, Adam, disobedience to God, put us in a weak state. For man had a knowledge now of good and evil, but no power, no strength or might to keep from it. Now, now the devil don't make us, but if that's all you have is that nature, you don't have God's spirit before Christ. And we're going to get in that, hopefully. The devil had supreme authority or dominion, or keys of this world. He had the power to influence our thoughts and behavior through the lust of our eyes, the lust of our flesh, and the pride of life, which only brought forth sinful actions. And the wages of sin is death, and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is the system of the world that controlled by the devil, which we all were subject to. In other words, we all. That's why he says to the Ephesians, you whom he hath quickened, he hath made you alive. How's that, you all? How you been quickened? You've received what? The Holy, the Holy Ghost. You have whom he hath quickened. He hath made you alive. He hath set you free. He hath given you life. Your soul have life now. You whom he hath quickened now, you have been buried with him by baptism. You went under and he took his blood and washed your soul clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. And when you rise up, he filled you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he gave you that sign that he entered in just as a baby come in crying. You began to speak in other tongues as the spirit of God gave the utterance. He quickened your soul, made your soul alive. And that stronghold. Now, no, watch, I'm about to say something. And he says, where in time past you walked, you lived according to the course of this world. That's that ungodly system being operated, the lust of your eyes. I don't care what the devil, all oh, the devil didn't have to possess us, just wave things before you. And because of your nature, we all followed some way, somehow. Nobody was able to uh, uh, break free from that dominion that he had. And no one got out of the grave because death got a hold of every man, every man. And so he says, when time passed, you walked, you lived according to the course of this world. And who's the charge of the, this world, this cosmos? Who's in charge of this system? It was the devil, the prince and powers of the air. And all of us, no one was able to tell the devil, I ain't doing it. I ain't serving you. I ain't going to be one that the death. No, no, I ain't sinning. You can have a desire, but you didn't have the power. And we're going to find out in the next verse, next week, you're going to find out that they're going to look and they, 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 they recognize their weakness. They recognize that the ironic priesthood is not good enough to save them. They're going to recognize that as long as that tabernacle stand, it is making manifest the way to the holy God has not yet been made. So they now terrify. They actually, they're, they're in that bondage and they're, they have fear of death. But Jesus said, don't worry, I'm coming. And I'm going to set the captivity, uh, the captives, I'm going to set them free. So watch what he says here. Where in time past you walk according to the course of this world. For uh, 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 the course of this world and what? According to the prince of the power of the air. That's the devil you are, uh-huh. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Now, they ain't talking about the world. The they says, and the spirit that now. And see, and I'm going to let you know. See, the children, partakers, everybody start off right, you all. Everybody come in believing. But the, the, he said, but the, the, the spirit or the devil that's now, now working in the children of disobedience. Paul is making it made known. You got some folks who came in 
And now the devil got a hold of them and make them do things in which they've been brought out of. Obedient children and disobedient children. Obedient children and disobedient. And God is saying, just because you're my child, don't mean that at the end when I come, you're coming back. It's those that have walked in the spirit. Because those that walk in the spirit of God, they are the true sons of God. Let's get St. John 16 real quick. And we're going to close on this. And this is going to be powerful because I thank God for Jesus Christ and what he did. 16, 7 through 11. 7 through 11. Nevertheless, uh -huh. I tell you the truth. Uh -huh. It is expedient for you that I go away. Uh -huh. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. Now, now let's get real quick. Let's, let's look at the setting. He is talking to his disciples, but yet he still got other people around that have their actually skeptic about who he is. And they don't really believe that he's the Messiah. And they have all kinds of accusation that you are false. You're, 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 you're a counterfeit. You're not real. You're blasphemed, saying that you are uh, the son of God. And all this, so he's around that. So he says to his disciples, he says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient. It is profitable. It's better for you that I go away. And why is that? Because me being with you is not good enough. I want to be in you. Right now, I'm your comforter. See, I lead and I guide you in all truth in the flesh. What do you mean by that? Because after he gives a parable, he says this. He'll say this to them as they leave. It's not given unto them, but it's given unto you. He says, the sower of the seed is the word of God. Now, 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 now he gave them the parable. He's giving you the interpretation. <laughs> Leading and guiding you in all truth. Comforting you in all matter. Just as the pillar of cloud led them by day and the pillar of fire led them by night. He says, if any man will follow me, they shall not be in darkness, but have the light of life. And you find Jesus now saying, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, what? The comforter will not come unto you. Uh -huh. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now he uses the word if. Because he's showing you his will. No man take my life. I lay it down. And, 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 and if, that if is predicated, if I do what God told me to do. Jesus had a will, you all. He submitted his will. It wasn't no automatic thing. He had to pray three times. Showing us that it ain't always easy. Submitting to the will of God. He didn't know. He wasn't worried about dying. It wasn't a whip. It wasn't a tomb. It was him becoming sin for you and I. To experience God whom he loved, God, who he said, this is my beloved son in whom I well please. But when God laid upon him the sins of the world, now God looked at him and judged him for every man that the sin that was upon him. And the wrath of, it wasn't the devil, the wrath of God was poured out upon him. And when God saw his soul travailing, it pleased God to bruise him. I'm showing y'all some you all, the love of God for us to give his son that we might have a right to the tree of life. And he says, Jesus, uh, he says in verse 8, what? And when he is come. Who's come? The Holy Ghost, uh-huh. He will reprove the world of sin. Uh-huh. And of righteousness and of judgment. Now he's saying this to them. It's expedient that I go away. If I go not away, the comforter will not come. Then he says, and when he, the Holy Ghost, which will not testify of itself, is going to testify of me. In other words, it ain't going to have nothing new. It's going to show you everything that I'm doing right now, how I live, how I act, how I respond. That's what it's going to do in your life. Nothing new, but the Spirit of Christ. And he says, and when he comes. Now, he will reprove. That word reprove means to confute. Or to prove to be false, to be wrong by argument or proof, to tell a fault. In other words, the Holy Ghost is going to be 
proof is going to be a witness against you. You don't think I am the Messiah. You don't think that God sent me. But if I go away, and I'm not talking to you and then step out the clouds and go up. No, I got to go down first. I got to be crucified. Then I got to go into the heart of the earth. Then when I go up, I send the comforter to come. If I then send the comforter to come, if the Holy Ghost come, it's going to testify, it's going to reprove the world that you have sinned. Why? Because you did not believe on him who have sinned. How can you have the gift of the Holy Ghost when a price got to be paid? He said, we reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Nine? Of sin. Uh-huh. Because they believe not on me. Now, the Holy Ghost come. Now, after it comes, it's going to prove that you sin. Why is that? Because I was real. It's going to prove that you should have believed on him. In whom he has sinned. What is the work of God? Believe on him. In whom he has sinned. Is go ahead. Let's read. Of righteousness. Uh huh. Because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of righteousness. You accuse me of being a blasphemer. See the the world and the Pharisees and others. They deemed him as a sinner, one that breaks the law of God. Even accused him of blaspheming, declaring that he was the Son of God. And then when you look at it. Uh, uh, Isaiah even said, they're going to say, surely he hath borne, uh, he said, surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God. That means you're getting a whooping for your own faults. God's getting you because you ain't right. That's how you're going to look at him. But he said, no, that ain't it. He was wounded for our transgression. You got in your mind he's getting a whooping or smitten by God because of his error. Like he's a transgressor. Uh-uh-uh. Is he being bruised for our iniquities? The chastisement, the punishment of our peace with God is upon him. With his stripes, every stripe that he's getting whipped. It ain't because he got uh, error. It ain't because he got sin. It ain't because he transgressed. Because we transgress. We transgress. And it pleased God to bruise him. But when you get the Holy Ghost, it's going to prove that I am not a counterfeit. I am not a liar. I am not a righteous. That I'm righteous. If you get the Holy Ghost, it's a witness against you that I'm righteous. And if the Holy Ghost come, then it's going to prove that the prince of this world has been judged. He had a, you, know, you can... You can say this all, but except you bind the strong man, you ain't getting no spoil. And Jesus, <laughs> he didn't just ascend, he first had to descend. And when he descend, Ephesians make it known, he says, uh, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? And then Ephesians picks it up, he says, he that descended is the same also that ascended up above all heavens. And then Colossians picked up and says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, trium uh, triumphant over them in it. The Holy Ghost is proof that Jesus spoiled or have de uh, destroyed the bondage of sin and have taken the devil's kingdom and have actually uh, destroyed the power of it. Now people can be saved and don't have to worry about being held in the grave. Death has lost its power. The grave has lost its strength. Y'all believe that? Amen. We, we got to stop here, but I'm going to show us <laughs> that everybody to Jesus came. I don't care how much they put their trust in the blood of bulls and goats. When they died, they didn't go up. They went down. Their bodies and souls. Body, I don't care if it was in a tomb, but the souls went into Shoal, the lower parts of the earth. Luke 16 lets you know there's two compartments, a torment side and a comfort side. Abraham, when he died, he didn't go up. He went down. All has sinned. But he's a children. And though they're fearing as because they're that bondage that they were in, yet they died in faith, not yet receiving the promise. But when Jesus died, he went not... I know y'all here, 
the preachers. And it sounds good because it's just a way of making y'all excited and, and shouting. And then the Lord went down to hell and he went through the fire and, and he saw Satan on the throne in hell and he got the keys and snatched the keys from the devil. No, the devil's not even in hell. He's the prince and power of the air. And when Jesus descended, he didn't even bother those that were in torment. He went to the comfort side and began to preach to those souls. And let them know that uh, 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 Abel, I'm the one. See, uh, Abraham, that seed, that all earth should be blessed. I'm that seed. David, I'm the offspring and the root of you. I'm the God of you and the son of you. Isaiah, I'm that wonderful. I'm that counselor. I'm the mighty God. I'm the everlasting father. Big little no. Job, I'm that living redeemer you was waiting for. <laughs> Just letting them know I'm here. And then after the third day, he says, we got to get out of here. And he took those souls out of that grave and put them in the presence of God. And some of them he put in their bodies and they walked the streets of Jerusalem again. Testifying that he conquered death and hell. And said, all power has been given unto me Hallelujah. in heaven and earth. I have the keys of death and hell. He spoiled all principalities and powers. But he had to die. So he took on what the children had. Flesh and blood that he through death might destroy him, the devil, who had the power of death. That is the devil. God bless you all.